On April 15, 1945, the British 11th Armored Division liberated Bergen-Belsen, one of the worst Nazi concentration camps, which epitomized the true bestiality and horrors of the Nazi regime and its death camps. The British forces found 13,000 unburied dead bodies and almost 60,000 prisoners who were sick and starved. Other thousands of inmates died of various diseases, such as typhus and tuberculosis, during the months following the camp's liberation. The British forces managed to capture male and female Nazi personnel responsible for these horrors and forced them to help bury the dead bodies in mass graves. One of them was the Commandant of Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, Josef Kramer. Josef Kramer was born on the 10th of November, 1906, in Munich, then part of the German Empire. He joined the Nazi party in December 1931, and in 1932, he joined the SS. From 1934 until the end of the war, he worked in various concentration camps, such as Dachau, Sachsenhausen, and Mauthausen. When in 1940, the Nazis established the most notorious concentration camp, Auschwitz, Josef Kramer was sent to this newly created concentration camp in Nazi-occupied Poland and became the assistant to Rudolf Hirsch, the camp's commandant. Kramer remained there for five months when he left Auschwitz and became the commandant of Natzweiler Struthof concentration camp in April 1941. Josef Kramer became one of those responsible for the murder of male and female Auschwitz Jewish prisoners for the so-called Jewish Skeleton Collection, which was to be housed at the Reich University of Strasbourg after the victims were photographed and their anthropological measurements taken. The purpose of this project was to prove the alleged racial inferiority of the so-called Jewish race and to emphasize that the Jews were subhumans and Germans were superhumans. It is believed that 86 inmates, 57 men and 29 women were gassed for this project personally by Josef Kramer. This project was never completed, and when the Allies discovered the corpses, some of them were beheaded and they were preserved by formalin. After the war, Kramer admitted he had forced the Jewish victims into the gas chamber and gassed them on the orders of Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler. He added that he could not disobey such orders and that he did not consider killing these innocent people a crime. In May 1944, Kramer was sent back to Auschwitz concentration camp. The commandant of the whole camp was Rudolf Hirsch, and Josef Kramer became the commandant of Auschwitz-Birkenau subcamp, which was the main center used to kill prisoners. When, in the summer of 1944, transports with hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews were coming in day and night, the crematoria could not keep up with burning the bodies. Thus, the ditches had to be dug. All this took place when Josef Kramer was the camp's commandant. Kramer also took active part in the selections, making the selections himself and helping to load people on lorries, which would bring these poor victims to the gas chambers. At Auschwitz, one of Kramer's favorite habits was making women do punitive sports exercises, in which the poor women would have to march, run, or do frog jumps until exhaustion. On one occasion, he was seen shooting at a prisoner. Fortunately, he did not kill the poor inmate, but the bullet that hit the prisoner went through the prisoner's hand. After the war, this inmate testified about this. Josef Kramer arrived at Bergen-Belsen, which was a camp for sick people, on December 1, 1944. Sanitary conditions were terrible, and there was no water for washing and hardly enough water for cooking. Between January and March 1945, when the prisoners were sent on death marches from the other concentration camps, about one-third of the prisoners who arrived in the transports were already dead, and almost 80% of the rest had to be fetched by truck from the station as they were too weak and sick to walk. On one occasion, out of a transport of 1,900 inmates, over 500 arrived dead. The prisoners got almost no food during these death marches, and there was no food when they arrived into the camp. The camp was so overcrowded that the prisoners had to sleep in a sitting position on the floor. During winter months, when it was freezing cold, there were 200 blankets in the whole camp for tens of thousands of prisoners. In March 1945, due to starvation, thirst, and the outbreak of typhus epidemics, the average daily mortality rate of prisoners was between 250 and 300. At Bergen-Belsen, Josef Kramer did not have any mercy with sick and starving prisoners and applied what he had learned at Auschwitz. Kramer's rule was so brutal that he became known as the Beast of Belsen. 
The morning roll calls were introduced, and even the sick prisoners had to attend them. After the war, Cromer explained it, saying that these prisoners were lazy to go out of the barracks, and thanks to attending these hours-lasting roll calls, the inmates could lead very bad air in their huts for a while. When one female inmate tried to escape and was caught, Josef Cromer started to hit the poor woman with a stick brutally on her head, face, and all over her body. As a result, the girl gave the name of two girls who she said had helped her. When these two girls refused to confess, Cromer gave instructions for them to receive five strokes on their bare behinds to make them confess. After the war, he only admitted to having slapped the face of the girl who wanted to escape, and claimed that he did not know anything about two other girls. One of the favorite sport activities of the SS at Bergen-Belsen was shooting at starving prisoners going near the kitchen. Josef Cromer and his cooks, such as Carl Francio, were seen taking part in this. When Cromer realized that the end of the war was inevitable and the Allies were approaching, he turned around completely, and he even tried to find food for hungry and typhoid-ridden prisoners. Because of this, he probably expected not to be arrested after the war would be over. Thus, when the British forces liberated Bergen-Belsen, Josef Cromer remained in the camp and did not flee as many of the camp's guards had done. He showed the Allies the camp and was soon arrested. He was tried at the Belsen trial which began on the 17th of September, 1945. At his trial, he refused to confess to any of the charges brought against him, claiming only to have been present during selections but never taking active part in them. At the beginning, he even claimed that there had not been any gas chambers. He even said that if any SS personnel who found pleasure in torturing the poor inmates carried sticks or unauthorized weapons, they did it against his orders. When he was asked about Irma Greza, the infamous hyena of Auschwitz, who used to kick prisoners with her heavy boots or whip them with her woven leather whip, which was covered with cellophane so that human blood could be easily washed from it, he said he could only say the very best about Greza. He added that she took her duties very seriously. He was right when taking her duties seriously meant brutal torture and mistreating the poor prisoners at Auschwitz in Bergen-Belsen. When he heard Grace's statement read, in which she said she had carried a whip and used it consistently, he said it was exaggerated. Hertha Ehlert, one of the camp's guards who was sentenced to 15 years in prison, testified that on one occasion when she complained of the increasing death rate to Cromer, he replied, Let them die. Why should you care? This attitude explains why there were thousands of thirsty prisoners in the camp, even though Bergen-Belsen was only 400 meters away from the river. When he was asked why he had not pumped water from the river, he claimed he lacked the necessary materials. It was again a lie, as the British troops pumped water from the river with the material they had found in the camp. He did not even let the prisoners drink water directly from the river, saying it was not fit for drinking. However, water from the river was fit for drinking, and the British troops found filth in the concrete tanks from which they were using water in the camp. When the tribunal asked him if he preferred to be a party to wholesale murder rather than be arrested himself, he replied without hesitation, yes. The British military tribunal found Josef Cromer guilty of crimes he committed at Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen and sentenced him to death by hanging. He was 39 years old when the British executioner Albert Pierpont carried out the sentence on the 13th of December, 1945. There were no tears shed for Josef Cromer. Thanks for watching the World History Channel, and don't miss our next videos. Click the subscribe button now for more interesting clips. Give us a like, and see you in the following episode.